Good day everyone and welcome to the Warhammer Challenge where five YouTubers are getting together to see who can make the best Warhammer. If you're here from one of the other channels, don't forget to tell me in the description and don't forget to look in my description to find the other guys' channels. So check out their videos and don't forget to tell them Lucas sent you. And with that, let's build a Warhammer. Now I'm doing everything by scratch here, so I begin by sketching an idea on paper so I have something concrete to work with. Once I have it on paper, then I transfer it to a block of wood so I can start carving a wood pattern. Now, I'm not much of a woodworker, but it's kind of a learn as we go process. Most of the carving is done with this sander. That way when I have it cast in the metal and I need to finish it, all the lines and contours will fit this sander and it will be a lot easier in the end. That's the plan anyway. I did want to break up the patterns a little bit so I used a saw and file to carve some straight lines. That'll be harder to clean up in the metal but nothing's easy is it? So I've roughed in the pick side but for the hammer side I want it to be perfectly round and this isn't wide enough for me to do that. So I've thought of gluing chunks of wood on each side or I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to put some Sculpey clay on there. I put the Sculpey clay in the oven and bake it just like normal and once it's hard it's pretty easy to sand. The round head wasn't really looking the best to me so I decided to redesign things and try an octahedral head. Making an even octagon proved to be a little bit challenging. At first I tried rounding the face. Then I made an octagon and squared off the corners and I'm really liking this one. So instead of something like this, I'm going to try to put this on instead and that will be my pattern. Now I have to get this ready for a core. In order to make a core, I took a piece of wood like this and I made it the same size as my hammer handle. Now I have to turn this into a sodium silicate core. For a mold release, I just slathered Vaseline on it and I mixed up some plaster and that's going to be my mold for my sodium silicate. Now my source of sodium silicate is this cement floor sealer. Water glass, they call it. Mix it with sand, it combines with CO2 and becomes hard and I can use that to cast with for a core. This is my first time attempting a sodium silicate core and it's more of an example of what not to do. This is way too runny and soupy for it to work. It needs to be porous so the CO2 gas can get inside. That's what causes the reaction to make it harden. Now this did eventually harden, but it took about a week. I tried different ways of packing it, baking it, but I really wasn't getting a successful core. As you can see, I redesigned it too. In the end, I had the best success with mixing it in a plastic bag until it was about the same consistency as green sand packing it in there and then putting it in a chamber where I had hydrochloric acid and limestone producing CO2 gas. But still I struggled with it. To make the hole in my pattern I simply used a drill press to start and a file and a dremel to finish. So a rundown of where we're at. Sodium silicate cores suck. They keep breaking. I can't get them to work. So I just took the mold, made a core out of investment, and I'm going to use this. We are on our third generation of hammer blanks. I like how this one looks, but when I put it on the hammer, but when I put it on a hammer, it's too much like a house hammer. I can't fight a war with that. So I got a bigger hammer handle, and I put it on, and figured the hammer part needs to be bigger. So I made a bigger hammer head. So we are finally ready to melt some metal. I wonder if the other guys are having this much trouble. How much you want to bet this is going to break when I put it in the sand? Think positive. I'll set the box, or flask as we call it, and powder the piece with talc to keep the sand from sticking to it. Because this piece is so oddly shaped, I'm going to begin by making a false cope. The cope is what we call the top side of the flask. The drag is the bottom side. So by making a false cope it gives me a nice solid foundation to have the piece set 
and then I will build the next piece on top of that. I will zoom the piece to the halfway point, smooth everything out, and then I will begin building the drag. So remember when I said I bet this thing's going to break? So the question is how to fix it. Maybe I can plaster it back together. I didn't want to use any glue because when the metal hits it, it's going to cause that to burn and off gas, which will cause impurities in the metal. So I thought plaster might work, but it really was a struggle. At this point I'm starting to feel a little defeated by these cores. Off camera I made another one and we will continue with making the drag. And another broken core. I was having trouble with the sand pulling away but I knew in the end I was going to do a lot of grinding so I didn't think it would be that bad if I just helped it and patched it by hand. Now that the drag is set I will destroy my false cope and rebuild it so I have my final cope. Is the false cope necessary? Maybe not but in theory it gives you a more precise casting. Now when I'm spearing this up one thing I have to remember is metal shrinkage. I have a lot of mass here, it gets very thin, and then mass here. So here and here are my main shrink points. It's not going to have a lot of metal to draw from here or the ends, so I have to have a big sprue going to both points. So I make sure that as that contracts, it has metal to draw in there and I don't get a big cavity. I was about to light the furnace and I saw my core sitting on the ground. That would have been a disaster. So I think it'll hold position if I just set it in there like that. I'm going to go with it. So it slipped and I hit the edge, smooshing and breaking it off which means I have to start over. I'm gonna call it a night. So, it's the next day. We're gonna give this another go. So this is where I left off. This side got smushed, but I don't think it's a total loss. This side is still fine, so I'm just gonna put my hammer back in position and just redo the top. first attempt in learning. I knew it was going to look rough, that doesn't bother me because I'm going to do a lot of grinding on it to get it nice and polished. This side looks great. This side doesn't. One problem that I see, here's a high spot, I have no vent. Another high spot on this side, no vent. I need to add a riser here and here, maybe some more, to make sure all the gases can escape. So I think we're off to a good start. I'll try again tomorrow. Quick reset.
Retrying the sodium silicate core. Cutting the metal to fit back in the crucible. Rebuilding my sand mold. Finally getting my sodium silicate to set. Getting some more vents in the mold. For this I just used a welding rod. Not forgetting to set my core this time. And I think we're ready to give this a second go. So this side turned out pretty good. I added vents on this side with some welding rod, but I still ended up with some big holes. Not only that, you can see the mold was offset when I put it back on there. So I ended up with a crooked cast. So there's nothing left to do but try again. The special thing about this hammer is it glows in the dark. So it's the third time. This side again looks pretty good, but I flip it over and I have massive pitting. It's just a big hollow mess. I might have to do a vertical pour on this one. So I made a new box with a different design and I'm gonna try a vertical pour. Metal's going to come down to the bottom, fill it up from the bottom up. Use a little overflow so if there's a little more metal contraction there, it has something to draw off of and it will vent out the spike. Well, that is definitely a better way to do that. My goodness, what a difference. It's almost perfect on both sides. <whistles> on to the next step, grinding. So it's back to the sander and since I used it to make the original pattern, it fits perfectly and makes short work of the cleanup. So the core worked, but not perfectly. I still needed to do a little shaping to get things to fit up nice. I'm not a blacksmith and I don't have a forge, but I do have a furnace and it's basically the same thing. The most historical war hammers had a way to rivet the head to the handle. It wouldn't be good if your hammerhead flew off the handle in the middle of battle. So instead of using just a wedge, I'm making a bracket that will allow me to really secure the hammerhead to the handle. Well, that was a journey, but we got it finished. I learned a lot of new skills on this one, but I think the result is pretty cool. I think that would do some damage. I'm not sure I'd want to fight with it, but I won't want to get hit with it either. I've been seeing some sneak peeks of what the other guys have come up with. Some pretty creative stuff. Don't forget to go check out their channels. See their version of the Warhammer Challenge. I'll post links in the description below. You can click on those, find their videos as soon as they're up. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.